So let me introduce to you Omar Fakeki, who is our executive producer for Raise Your Voice, and I'll let him explain the program along with uh, Nada Alwadi. Omar? Thank you very much. Um, I promise we'll make this short. I know we're out of time. Uh, we've heard a lot of information today about um, media coverage around the world. Um, and Neda and I would like to uh, use this opportunity to focus on um, the uh, importance of engagement, engaging your audience. It is the concept behind um, the Middle East Pro Broadcasting Network's Raise Your Voice. And here's a short uh, overview video uh, of Raise Your Voice. Extremist ideology has spread throughout the Middle East with deadly results. Since this crisis emerged, Al Hurra and Radio Sawa have provided a counter narrative through their newscasts, discussion programs, and digital platforms, showing stories of religious tolerance, female empowerment, peaceful mediation, bringing together people to discuss their differences. The focus of the last year has been MBN's Raise Your Voice. Through television, radio, and digital platforms, Raise Your Voice encourages Iraqis to express their opinions and explore solutions that will contribute to a stable Iraq, providing a dialogue that challenges ISIL's violent propaganda. Al Hurra's Raise Your Voice television programs highlight Iraqis working to improve the country. From Kurdistan, a show on the plurality in Iraq, a monthly town hall meeting where Iraqis can ask questions to political and civic leaders, and delusional paradise, showing eyewitness accounts of people and communities who have suffered at the hands of ISIL. Radio and television call-in programs engage Iraqis on topics such as rights of women, government corruption, and how to help displaced Iraqis. Each week, the Raise Your Voice website and Facebook page focus on a theme that centers on the underlying causes of extremism, resulting in frequent discussions among pro- and anti-ISIL supporters. Raise Your Voice, opening the door to dialogue and debate. Uh, the uh, Freedom House's Freedom uh, Press report consistently lists Iraq as not free. Um, the media in Iraq is um, controlled by political and uh, religious parties who do not allow opinions other than the, their own. Through Raise Your Voice, we created a platform for people to share their opinions and to discuss very important issues. Um, we. Since the beginning, we uh, focused on building trust with this audience. Um, and we do um, this through many ways, including involving them in the editorial process. And we also do that through many ways. And I would like, Nada, if you want to sure. talk about this. Yeah, definitely, uh, Omar. The, the fact that we were trying to build trust with the audience was very essential since the beginning. We were trying to give them voices in this platform. And, and that's exactly what we, we I think, achieved. Uh, the environment in our uh, platforms are very vibrant. We kind of host all kinds of opinions and ideologies. And we do this in many ways. We, we hold virtual editorial meetings every week to ask people to suggest, to give us comments, to uh, be part of the discussion. Many of the discussions that they uh, give us will be translated in our content. That will be articles, that will be videos. We basically send reporters to follow up on a story that was suggested by a fan on Facebook. And that has been very essential for us, right, Omar? Yeah, and not only uh, we, uh, involving the audience in the editorial process did not stop at suggestions. Uh, we actually get uh, unsolicited content, a lot of un unsolicited content from the audience that we then vet and then uh, post on our platforms. Um, lately, uh, we've had, a, if we can show the example, this is a video, we received, a screenshot of a video we received from uh, fans showing Muslims and Christians erecting the largest cross in Mosul, in the same place where Daesh just a few months earlier had destroyed uh, another cross. And this was an, uh, an invitation 
uh, to all Christians who were forced to leave the, the area to come back after the liberation from ISIS. Um, another um, example uh, was, um, if, can, we, can, we, can we show the other example? Um, okay. Um, um, we actually have other, other examples um, uh, we, we get from the audience every day. Uh, just today, actually, I was uh, uh, replying to my um, editors. Um, we, we received uh, emails from uh, fans uh, with, with the photos showing the, uh, the, the um, uh, community trying to rebuild areas uh, liberated by ISIS. Um, but our, I, I call it crown jewel. Uh, engagement happens through the work of our 24-7 multimedia um, uh, community managers. Yeah. And Nadaf, you want to talk That's about That's us, this? yeah. We basically engage with our audiences 24-7. Every day there is somebody to listen to these people. So we are always um, on uh, the discussions. We are always there. We discuss. Uh, and it's amazing because you can find someone who uh, sympathizes with ISIS uh, ideology in that platform. You can find somebody who will criticize ISIS ideology in that platform, and they all engage in an amazing way. I have an example. We, po we post questions every day to encourage people to comment, and uh, so we posted one question a day uh, asking people if they actually would agree to marry somebody who has extremist views. And that was very interesting because, well, some of the fans said, well, yes, because extremism means being religious, and that's a good thing. And then other people jumped in the discussion and said, how, how do you define extremism? Because would you actually agree on someone uh, killing someone because they don't share your same values or religious beliefs? And, and this person said, no, I don't agree with that. That's a crime. And then kind of the discussion went from uh, answering the question, would you marry somebody, to actually defining concepts. People tend to generalize. And I guess the Middle East, we have this problem a lot. People tend to generalize on many concepts. And then we, it's kind of an educational platform as well. Like the discussion will go through some concepts that people really make generalizations without really understanding. And, 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 then, and yeah. this is impact. Um, what started as a simple yes or no question yeah. turned into an educational thread of comments that people threw. Uh, it discussed very important issues. And speaking of impact, um, it is very important for us to gauge impact because, after all, why are we doing Raise Your Voice? Um, and there are many ways to um, gauge impact. Personally, I believe impact is best shown when a piece of content affects, positively affects someone's life. Um, this is, these are screenshots of uh, a video we lately uh, posted on uh, our Facebook page showing a, the, a mother, a woman who is the mother of an Iraqi soldier who was killed uh, in the fight against Daesh in Mosul. She had to live in the city's dump in southern Iraq, in Basra in southern Iraq, because she didn't have anyone to, uh, to, to provi provide for her. A few days after um, we posted the video, we received dozens of uh, requests from fans asking for information to help this woman. And a few days later, the government got involved and allocated a housing unit for her, furnished it, and also allocated a monthly stipend uh, for her to pay the bill. Um, another example also, we have a, um, a video we posted uh, of uh, an eight-year-old or nine-year-old Iraqi kid who was forced, forced with his family to, to, to leave Mosul after ISIS uh, um, occupied it. Um, and the kid was um, simply saying, I'm shivering in our tent, and I, I just need coat. It was coat. winter. Yeah. Um, it was the winter time. Yeah. Um, and we received dozens of uh, uh, requests to help uh, the kid. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, a few days later, an Iraqi woman sent 130 coats to the same camp where he was living um, and asked us, uh, or asked the camp, um, to uh, give one of the coats to the kid and ask him to distribute the rest uh, for his friends. Um, this is the kind of work we do at Raise Your Voice every day. And uh, if you have any questions, we're ready to answer. Yeah, thank you. Alex Howard from the Sunlight Foundation. Uh, I just went and looked at it online. I see you're on Facebook, obviously. You're on Twitter, you're on YouTube. Um, these are all American tech company platforms that have requirements for people to register, people to give uh, authentication, uh, et cetera. 
Um, what's your thinking upon hosting the speech there as opposed to on a website or other platforms? Um, does it expose people to some risk um, if they make comments there? Um, what are you hearing on the ground in terms of this choice to host speech there as opposed to build something yourself? Well, we, have, we also have a website where people can go and comment on our website. It's erfasautek.com, uh, um, and that's Raise Your Voice in Arabic. Um, Do they? But, sorry? Do they go? Uh, of course. We have, we have engagement on our, all our uh, um, uh, platforms, including the website, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and, and uh, Facebook. Uh, but um, people um, keep engaging. We see increasing engagement uh, on our platforms every day. Um, and um, w they are discussing very important issues. So I guess because Raise Your, Vo Raise Your Voice is one of the very few, if not the only, platform for uh, people in the Middle East and North Africa regions, and we focus on Iraq for Iraqis, um, to really voice out their concerns and discuss important issues, I guess they keep gra gravitating towards our platforms. And also, I might add, uh, you know, the data shows that most of the young people in the Middle East in general and in Iraq in specific actually exist on Facebook. And uh, this is, I mean, we didn't choose this outlet because of, I mean, we, we have reasons because the discussion goes there. And that's why we kind of go to the, to the platforms that they exist so that we can kind of, uh, you know, yeah. engage with them. And, and, and in terms of the security, it's actually interesting. I mean, many of them, they, they use their actual names, you can tell. And you can find, especially the ISIS sympathizers, um, it won't, won't necessarily be actual names. They will use, you know, trolls or whatever. Uh, I mean, not their personal names, but still you can kind of tell with, the, with following the account who these people where are they, who are their followers, and kind of make some, some idea about it, so yeah. So as someone who's managed comment sections and Facebook pages, I sympathize with the challenges of trolls and people who aren't being productive there. Uh -huh. um, I've also seen in other countries, people who are managing these spaces have challenges because sometimes the countries want to have speech taken down that they don't like. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever receive requests from the governments of these countries to take things down? And if so, what do you do? We, we have not. And even if we do, I don't think we will uh, oblige because we're a fr free uh, platform for all. And the idea is to provide a free uh, platform for people in Iraq and other parts of the Middle East and North Africa. Um, and, but the point is we are present where people are. Yeah. That may change next week or next month. Uh, and if it changes, we will also change our strategy. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm um, told time is up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank, thank you, Amar and Nada, for, for, that, for that presentation. And two words that I, that I heard you say that I think are especially important, a dialogue and debate. Uh, and generating dialogue and debate uh, in the mission uh, that the journalism and media face today it seems more difficult and more challenging because there's so much noise out there. And so how do you distinguish yourself? I think some of you know, what we just saw here is one way to do that, to set yourself apart but through your openness and through your, your um, dialogue and debate. You know, what I'm fond of saying that what journalism should do is to take people to places they haven't been before, to meet people, to see points of view, to see places, to hear ideas that they haven't been before. But with freedom comes responsibility. And so those of us in media need to be thoughtful about that, too, um, as do people, our uh, citizens. You know, the, the, there has been a power shift, and the power shift has gone from big media empires to citizens and citizens all over the world. So there's a teaching process that has to take place there as well as citizens understand their responsibility in an open marketplace of ideas where facts, alternative facts and everything fight for our attention. Um, I want to thank uh, John. Lansing and the BBG um, for bringing together this um, very important conversation at a very important time on a very important topic. My hunch is there will be more. <laughs> My hunch is we didn't solve all problems today, but we certainly touched across a number of them. I want to thank our speakers today. Uh, as I say, uh, this is very important stuff. It's a conversation that we should be having across the year, not just on a designated day. So let's open up that dialogue and debate. I want to thank our viewers who've joined us on BBG. <clears throat> and Facebook um, for staying with this, and I hope you'll revisit it and think about it. You received a journalist persona at the beginning of this event when you came in. 
Uh, check it out. I did. Um, mine poses a pretty tough question to me that I'm actually not sure how I would respond to. So I'm going to have to go and um, have some dialogue and debate with myself on this one as I figure it out. <laughs> um, do take the time, though, to take a look at it and uh, join the conversation online. And uh, do what you can uh, to support this mission, either by doing it um, or by making some noise and generating some dialogue and debate around your own tables and hearths, families, friends, and social networks. Thank you very much for being here with us today. Have a good night.